Hello. Today's uh, reflection, today's sermon is based on the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, verse 1 to 14. And for many ministers or biblical geeks, today's passage is simply known as the Valley of the Dry Bones. During the last few years, I would say, it has become a go-to text when a congregation needs to be inspired before a major stewardship campaign or a new ministerial project. It is used as a motivational speech when community of faith feel they're too old to do anything. You know, uh, you might be aging, but uh, I, there's still life in you. You know, you can do this with God's help. Go, go, go. So more than a more than a week uh, more than a week more than a month ago I selected this reading because I thought I could link it with the, the beginning of spring and Easter that is only uh, two in two weeks I know it's hard to believe I plan to preach about new life appearing all around us when we're walking outside of course, like everybody else, I could not have predicted the current situation. I could not foresee that our world would be turned upside down, the unimaginable becoming the new normal, and our collective level of hope dropping to a, a decimal low. And, and still I decided to keep it because of the message it offered to those in the time of crisis. You see, approximately 600 years before the birth of Jesus, the prophet Ezekiel mostly lived in the city of Jerusalem when the city was attacked by the Babylonian army. And this nation, the Babylonian, was the superpower of its time. They were like... Uh, Team roller crushing everyone who happens to be on their path. And the Israelite fate was not different than the others. After a fairly short siege, the Babylonian entered into Jerusalem. The city was decimated. The temple completely destroyed. And the leaders of God's people were sent into exile. The former vibrant and thriving kingdom of David and Solomon was laid to waste. Ruins, desolation, and death were the new normal for the Israelite. But, but more than a military defeat, the fall of Jerusalem and the exile in Babylon create a profound trauma in the community. Because they were living in a strange and foreign land where nothing was familiar. And furthermore, they were cut off from the, their official and long-established religious practices. With the total destruction of the temple, the specific place the Israelites believed God dwell on the earth like... Uh, back then, let's say they want to write a letter to God, they would just have to write on their envelope, One Temple Road, Jerusalem. That, that would be it. Well, after this tragedy, they wonder where and how they would be able to find God. Was the God with whom covenants were made in the past with their ancestors still present among them? Or was God simply out of reach? Was there a way out of this crisis during nothing makes sense? Or was it the end of the adventure for God's people because they have been abandoned? For most of us, this sort of profound despair is almost impossible to understand. Maybe the survivor of Horrible tragedies like the genocide in Rwanda, the killing fields in Cambodia, or the Holocaust can truly grasp the depth of the Israelites' pain. Like, 
I remember in a biopic I've seen some years ago about Simon Weisenthal, the famous Nazi hunter is asked after the war why he does not want to return to his former life and resume his work as an architect. And Weisenthal simply and sadly answered, what's the point of building houses if you don't know anyone who can live in them? And is, it is during these times of profound lament, collective depression, and extreme despair that God came to Ezekiel. And the prophet is brought out by the Spirit of the Lord, the text says, and set down in the middle of a valley. And there he discovered a green scene. It was an arid place, most likely the site of an ancient battle, and as Eugene Peterson write in his translation of the Bible called The Message, there were bones all over the place, dry bones, bleached by the sun. They were as dry as probably my hands because I washed them all the time, and obviously life as departed those bones long ago. And God asked Ezekiel, mortal, can these bones live? <laughs> oh Lord, God, you know, replied the prophet, which sounds like the equivalent of a teenager who rolled his or her eyes and saying whatever, or maybe a very, very polite way to claim that the prophet believed there's as much chance to this to happen than finding a snowball in hell, you know. But God says to Ezekiel, be brave. Stand up. Speak to the bone. Proclaim words of hope and renewal. And if you're not sure what to say, I will inspire you. So Ezekiel stood up in a valley full of desiccated bones and began to preach to them. And he prophesied as he's been commanded. And suddenly, there was a noise. There was a rattling and quaking. And all the bones were knit back together. And they formed bodies. And they came alive. And they stood on their own feet. And there was a vast multitude in front of the prophet. The life-giving breath of God infused in them a new energy. And then God turned to Ezekiel and said, These bones were like your people, you know, my friend. Their mindset create this problematic situation. They are lost. Because they are overwhelmed by their pain, their grief, their despair. They have lost faith. They have lost hope. They see themselves as this valley of dry bones. They see themselves as long dead. They see themselves as beyond the point of a return to life. And on this day, during these times when we all struggle to make sense of our current reality, sorry. As we are enduring a moment of collective exile in our homes, cut off from our community. And as we can barely imagine the day we will walk away from this global crisis, we are reminded that the Spirit of God has the power to bring us hope in a time of hopelessness. God constantly shows us new possibilities when all seems to be impossible. God's create life in the most desolated places. Instead of focusing on all our problem, losing our mind about what is, and letting the current climate turn ourselves into a field of desiccated, lifeless bones, 
God invites us to be courageous. Despite all the signs around us, God invites us to see the opportunity around us and gives us hope and new life in the what can be. You see, after losing the temple in Jerusalem, the Israelites remember that God cannot be confined to a single and specific place in this universe. They understood that God's presence can be found everywhere, even in the most foreign and unlikely spaces and times. And as we are currently unable to worship in our church buildings, God call us to think of new ways of doing what we have always done. We're asked to answer a heartbreaking situation with imagination because we have the power to reimagine how can we we can be a community of faith we have the power to reimagine how we can reach out to those who feel cut off from their neighborhood from their town from their communities we have the power to reimagine how God's church can be present and be relevant in our world we have the power to reimagine how we can perceive God's reassuring embrace. We have the power to reimagine how we can truly find God's presence, regardless of all the signs of lament, fear, and despair surrounding us. During these days of crisis, maybe what we really need is more than a stimulus package, new technologies, or a truckload of Purell. No, maybe what we really need is a renewed sense of hope. We're called to rediscover hope in ourselves. Hope that new life can emerge in a time of despair. Hope that a scattered people will find new reasons to live like the dry bones in the valley. And the source of this hope reside in the fact that no matter what, God is with us. We're not alone. Thanks be to God. And Amen. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.